centuries, our kind has stayed hidden on Earth. But darkness has found us again. It felt very mystic, man, and magical. Like, it, it was like, uh, the very first time I saw it on the scout, I was like, this is beautiful. How are we gonna shoot this? And there was so much to capture that I was like, oh, where am I place the camera? I can look any direction and it looks great, but I wanted to look every direction at the same time. When we went, it was interesting because it was during COVID quarantine. So the park was actually shut down. And I remember at a certain point, COVID, where they were, they were lifting up the, uh, whatever, the van on the park itself or Machu Picchu itself, sorry. And what was special about it, they asked us like, hey, we, when you guys are shooting here, but people travel all across the world. If we lift this up, they would love to visit Machu Picchu. And so to have the ability to shoot while tourists also came through and saw it for the first time was like amazing because we got to experience it every day, but then also see it on people's expressions to experience the park as well, or Machu Picchu itself in the site. Um, yeah, it was just a great experience, man. One that I can say is like probably one of my favorites ever is just like being there, being in the midst, literally the mist as it's going through us and we're shooting these scenes with the Transformers and Anthony and Don was pretty special. Peru was fantastic. It was hard because we chose hard places to shoot. So we went to the jungle for 30 days and we got hot, you know, <laughs> and, and that was hard. And then we're in Cusco and, and higher. So we were between 10 and almost 13,000 feet. So we could hardly breathe, and then we. Uh, but Machu Picchu was the ultimate experience because we shot there for nine days, um, and it's interesting. The more time you spend at a place like that, the more you experience it. You just it starts to get in your heart. It starts to get in your bones. Um, at first, when you go, you're like, "Oh, look at all this," and then after a while, you're just settled in, and you're like, "Wow." So it was a really an amazing experience for us. Prime. This is about the fate of all living things. Unicron is coming. Yeah, no, it took time to try to balance out the textures of that because I don't think we've ever really seen like a mixture of hair and then actual like uh, from talking about Primal at first, like his ape-like texture and shoulders, and then you see the Transformer underneath him. And so like, it was really important that not only did they sort of look real, that they felt real. And one of the things that I realized is that, you know, what they weren't doing in the past, like Optimus Prime, for example, doesn't breathe, right? They don't breathe. But for me, I gave breath to the robot. So you saw the internal parts sort of moving right there on the spot, which, which elevated sort of like their design and their presence on screen when he's talking or saying something, you could feel the chest plates moving and you could see the like pipes and all that. So like designing it so it can do that and then also designing it so it can transform later on was took, took us a lot of time and that's, that's where I felt like we broke ground with like the transformation and transformers, if you will, is the, the Maximals. It won't stop! Back up! Oh, I thought we were boys! Yeah, no, first I kind of dove into uh, the Porsche slash Mirage's personality, which was a little bit more flashy. He was an adolescent, kind of like a rebel, if you will. I called him the outcast of the Autobots groups. Like when everyone is like, here's the mission, he's like doing his own thing all the time and they kind of call him out for it. And Pete Davidson just felt that way. You know, he's a little bit of a rebel in the whole nine. And so when casting him, uh, he, he wanted to add, you know, a special thing to Mirage, which was filling the 90s references and filling the comedic beat. So we would play a lot when we were in the booth in terms of developing his voice and what he would say if he would reference Jim Carrey or do something that Adam Sandler did in Happy Gilmore and like play with just a few things so people can catch it. But it became part of Mirage's personality because that's all he knew was you know uh references of the culture because that's all he would be as a car is probably listen to listen to uh, uh music and or go to drive-in movies as we kind of called out in the film um so that was important and working with pete davidson was really cool and special well we always imagined that mirage was going to have a certain attitude we didn't know mirage was going to be as funny uh and pete brought that he found he was always a clever character but i'm not so sure comedic and so what he brought was clever and comedic and vulnerable. And um, he's one of the big success stories for us because he hadn't done this kind of thing before. Uh, what we know him as is so different. And so I think part of the experience of this, we were like, wow, look at how good this is, you know? So we began changing scenes a bit because he was sometimes ad-libbing just such great lines. We're like, all right, we got to have that now. Um, and that, brings the movie alive and i think you're right it's um 
it's like Bumblebee in a way. He's just so utterly likable and lovable. 